So as the summer's over, we've got plenty of jobs to be doing, little jobs to be doing to keep us through the winter. One of the ones that's been on the list for some time is just sat up there and it's the bird box that we made months ago, maybe eight or ten months ago. We're going to fit that today. So I have checked. There's no birds uh, nesting in the in this box. So it's just a case of just unscrewing it from here. And this cable here is not a power cable. It's a, a data cable that runs to the to the barn. So I'm probably I'm not going to chop that. I'm probably just going to roll that up and just in case we need to get data over there again. Well, that's interesting. So I don't think that's data after all. I think what we've got in here is a camera. How <laughs> bizarre. So here we have the old nesting box and uh, the camera, which I couldn't see from the ground, was in the top here looking down. And uh, that's the camera there. This is the back plate that was screwed to the wall and the camera was kind of at that angle. And at first I thought this was data um, because it looked like a video, a video jack. Now I'm looking at it. I can see that that's a power cable. Can you just see the pin inside there? So that's not data. And this is old school technology. So that's a little transmitting aerial just here. So what we don't have is at the other end of this, somewhere inside the house, plugged in, there would have been a box with a receiver and that receiver would have taken that signal. And I imagine this is signal number four. I imagine if you bought a set of these, there'd be one, two, three, four, perhaps. And um, so I doubt we can reuse that. It's very old technology, but I have got an old CCTV system somewhere so I will keep that just in case we can reuse it. Should be careful of is if you can see in here, can you see we have some like ladybirds, some little bugs, and the same on here, which have come in to this box for winter. So I'm going to put this aside somewhere in the workshop where it's not going to get disturbed. And then they'll be safe uh, for the winter time. In fact, I might screw that back onto there just so they've got um, the same conditions and then just stow that somewhere for them to be for winter. Now, I'm not sure if you remember, but this was a, a project that we built some time ago, eight or so months ago. We used offcuts of timber left over from the barn door project. This was tongue and groove untreated pine. And we basically created three separate standing nesting boxes. We joined those together using glue and nails. So just here I'm assembling the medium size one, the middle size one of the three. And again that's just uh, glued, screwed and nailed. And then after a little bit of filling on all the joints, a couple of holes for the birds to enter the, their boxes, and then we screw them together. So here I'm making the roof tiles, the shingles if you like, and this is out of an old piece of plywood left over from a wardrobe, I'm cutting those into random size tiles and then just tacking those on with nails. And then finishing off with a bit of fascia board, which is just an old bit of pine trim lying around. We created a base out of the same tongue and groove and then finally used the same colour 
as what the barn doors were painted in. And that is our bird box uh, project, all from waste material. But episode 80, as I say, if you wanted to see it in full. The one thing it's missing is a means to mount it in a similar way to the old box against the wall. So there's probably two ways to do it. I can either do it at 45 degrees. So this is the wall here. That's quite complicated. Um, the easier way to do it is just to have the wall against this back edge here. So this will be facing forward and this will be out to the side of the house. The only problem with that is this uh, fascia here um, will stick out as well as that. So on the backboard, probably going to need to make just a couple of blocks just to bring that off of the wall slightly. So if we use something like this, this is a, an old upright from that picket fencing that we bought, um, probably extended below here. We just need a couple of blocks just to bring it out so it's sat beyond we are look I just need a couple of blocks to bring it off of the wall so this is um, not fouling with the wall the first thing to do is just denail denail done I'm just going to cut that off a little shorter there this is going to be against the house uh, and so all that's going to do is in is push this further out so we're trying to get it as close as possible so I can just chop it off it won't be seen so let's do that now just do a vertical cut from there. There we are. Well, we've got 36, 18 is the centers. It's pretty much there. Just mark either side of that block so we know that it needs to sit roughly there. And let's just duplicate that 11 and a half, 11 and a half. So now all we need to do is just to get a block, just to get a block which is that thick, uh, and put that top and bottom, and that will then lift this board off sufficient for us to be able to screw it on so let's just find the width of this it wants to be about there and uh, let's just cut really not worth getting the chop saw out for this so you might as well cut by hand I use the saw as my square I use my saw as my square. There we are. Let's cut that first one. Draw back. Probably a bit, uh, probably a bit, uh, a bit rough this rip saw. But we're through. Okay. And the same again. Use this piece as our template. Yeah, this uh, this rip saw is a little little heavy-handed for this this job. So a few drawbacks to get the saw to bite. We're in. Okay. Right. So I've marked my center line and. The width that I need, so that block will probably live there. This is batten timber for roofing, so it's already pressure treated. And then I needed to make a little pad just to bring bring that flush, and then just sit 
that one around there. And then once all that's squared up, then that will just sit over the top and be screwed right the way through this material, through the pad, and then into the box below. Lovely. And that's how it's going to sit up against the house. Okay, the last thing to do is just to just paint up the bottom because you'll see the bottom. I didn't expect that to happen. And then we're done. There we go, we've got four nesting boxes, two, two on this elevation and two on this elevation. So it's kind of like a high rise apartment block for the, uh, for the local small birds. Not sure which ones will use it, really don't know much about that yet, but hopefully they'll nest in it next year. <laughs>